Hello students, welcome to the fourth part of noise analysis video series. In this fourth part, we were discussing about different sources of noise that exist in the CMOS circuits. Now, in the previous video, we discussed about the thermal noise that exists inside a resistive element. So, now in this video, we'll discuss about the thermal noise in the MOSFET. We know when a MOSFET is operated in the triode region, it exhibits a residue behavior. And one could visualize this residue behavior by looking at the output characteristic graph. There is a plot between VDS versus current. Now, we know that whenever the value of VGS is greater than the value of VT, then an increase in the value of VDS will have an increase in the value of current. And if at all, if I assume that the value of VGS that I have applied is equal to VGS1, this is the behavior. And now that if I have a different value of VGS, which we labeled as VGS2, which is higher than the value of VGS1, then again, an increase in the value of VDS results in an increase in the current. So clearly, we could be able to see that there is a kind of residue behavior in the triode region. Now, one could model this residue behavior under this triode region by assuming that the value of VDS is closer to the value of zero and modeling this behavior in terms of GDS as mu COX W by L VGS minus VT. Now, because of this residue behavior, one could write the power spectral density of this residue component GDS as something like this, which is 4 kBT times that of the GDS value. Now, clearly, one could see that this particular power spectral density term is only valid for a transistor that is in the linear region. But what about the transistor in the saturation regime? Now, we know Ultimately, even in the case of a saturation region, there is a relation between the change in the voltage of VDS with respect to the change in the current, right? So, again, uh, what I would say is that even the behavior of the channel in the saturation region is also a residue component. And due to which, we need a power spectral density quant expression, which is valid for all the region of operation rather than specific to a single region of operation something like this. So what I'm trying to mean is that this particular expression is valid only for a transfer that is operated in the triode region. But we need a general expression such that I can use this general expression for any given region of operation. So because of which let us rewrite this power spectral density which is specific to the triode region to a more general form which is given as now in this expression we have the term qi which which represents the inversion charge or the channel charge so let us quickly make a quick check by substituting the value of the inversion charge quantity for a region when our transistor is operated in triode. So when we operate a transistor in the triode region, we'll assume that the value of VDS is equal to zero. And in that condition, the channel charge QI or the inversion charge QI could then be written as the gate capacitance CGS times that of the effective gate potential. Now, since because we have the source and the drain, okay, so between them, we have the channel charges and these channel charges can be returned as the oxide capacitance per unit area multiplied with the area of the channel. And that is the quantity that we have in the place of the gate capacitance. And effectively, we have a gate voltage which is defined as VGS minus VT and we call this as effective gate voltage. So it, it's a pretty simple relation that we have. 
Q equals to C into V. And, and the expansion of each of these terms in different regions. So now that we'll, let us try to plug in this value onto our general expression of power spectral density term, which is 4 kb t into mu modulo of the charge divided by L square. So now that when we plug in, uh, we can cancel out some of the few common terms and we would end up having an expression which is given in this particular square bracket. And we and when we look carefully, this is the expression that we have got at the place of GDS. So now clearly this is a proof stating that the general expression returns us the original power spectral density quantity. So now let us look for the saturation region. Now the very first thing we need to calculate is the channel charge QI. And we know that this channel charge QI is basically is a product of channel charge into the effective gate potential. Now this effective gate potential is always equal to VGS minus VT. Now that we need to compute the value of the gate capacitance and from the digital VLSI course we know that whenever the transistor is operated in the saturation regime we know that the channel will be tapered and the channel charge that we would have would be equal to two-third of the oxide capacitance per unit area times that of the area of the channel and that is the expression that we will use in the place of CGS. So when we do so the total channel charge quantity would then return us this particular expression and substituting back into the general expression one would have a final expression of power spectral density in the saturation region. Now clearly this expression is almost identical to what we have seen for a thermal noise current in the triode region. The only difference is this particular term. So what I really mean is that let us try to establish the relation of this square bracket term. So whenever we operate a transistor in the saturation region, we know that this particular expression is nothing but the transconductance term. So in the place of this square bracket, rather than writing it as GDS, we represent them as GM. And that is what has been substituted here. And again, one could remove the term 4 out of this 8, a quantity which is defined as 4 kBT. And then there is a gamma term and this gamma term is specific to a region of operation. So in the case when we operate the transistor in the triode region, then the gamma would then have a value of 1. But in case if the region of operation is saturation, then this gamma will be considered to be a value which is equal to 2 by 3. So again, this represents a more general and more useful form such that we no need to remember the form that is valid for all different regions of operation. Okay, so what I re really mean here is that we no need to f remember this particular form, but rather one could remember this general expression and depending on different region of operation, one could substitute an appropriate value of gamma into them. Okay, so now that I just want to bring out one of the important observation that we could see around this discussion. The very first thing is the power spectral density of a noise current source. Now when we look carefully, we could see the power spectral density of a thermal noise source will have a form which is given as 4 kb t times the law of some conductance or something like 1 by r form. Whereas when you look across the power spectral density of a thermal noise voltage, then it will have a particular form which is given as 4 kb t times the law of the residue element. Now let us try to recollect that whenever we had a noise resistor, we know that one could model this noisy resistor 
as a noiseless resistor in parallel with a noise current component. And when we look carefully, the power spectral density of this noise current source could be written as S sub i of f to be equal to 4 kb t times that of the conductance which is nothing but 1 by r. Or one can also redraw this noisy resistor as a noiseless resistor in parallel with a voltage noise component. And when we look for the power spectral density of this voltage noise, it is defined as S sub V of F to be equal to 4 kBT times that of the residue element R. So clearly reflecting the same phenomena that we had discussed here. Now let us try to compute the maximum thermal noise. Okay, yeah, the maximum thermal noise that is contributed from a single MOS transistor. In order to evaluate this maximum thermal noise voltage term, first we need to consider the type of circuit that one could have such that it has been biased in the saturation region and then we evaluate the noise contributed through this single MOSFET. So one has to consider a structure which will help us to evaluate the noise contributed because of the thermal noise that exists inside this channel of the Zen MOS. Okay. And I am properly biasing this particular MOSFET such that the MOSFET is operated in the saturation region. And one could see that we know the power spectral density of the noise current across the channel of it. right? And that is what we have drawn which is nothing but we know the value of the average noise current component and whose power spectral density is given as T. And since we are operating in the saturation regime, I could up use the value of gamma to be equal to 2 by 3 times that of GM. So we know this quantity and what we have been asked is to compute the noise voltage term. So we have to use the concept of spectrum shaping property where the input to this network is in terms of current but we have been asked to compute in terms of a voltage. So we need a transfer function that performs this conversion of an input current component into an output voltage component here. So again when we try to do so the H of F is defined as output divided by an input component and that is nothing but a voltage divided by a current component and we know that this combination will give us some sort of resistance. But what is the resistance residue element that we have between this current component and the voltage component here. So clearly when we look across this output node just because our noise current component is also exists in this circuit at the output. So the only way that we can compute this transfer function is by looking at the resistive element that we have across the drain. So when we look down through the drain we know that we have a small signal resistive element which is equal to R0. And so now that we got this transfer function, let us try to evaluate the noise power spectral density in terms of voltage as So now that we got the value of the power spectral density of the thermal noise in terms of voltage. Now what we wanted is the RMS value of it. So again one has to make use of the wiener kitchen relation to convert this power spectral density to a variance term. So again one could see that there is no frequency band that has been specified here and due to which the factor of delta F is considered to be 1 hertz here such that this expression is actually representing the variance noise voltage component which is given as 4 kbt 2 by 3 
gm times the rough r naught square and again this is nothing but the mean square value out of which one has to evaluate the rms value by taking a square root on this mean square value and that is the expression that we wanted here so with this we complete our discussion about the thermal noise from a mosfet in the next video we'll discuss about the flicker noise from the mosfet